Glyco means sugar and lysis means splitting. Glycolysis involves a series of 10 enzyme catalyzed reactions that splits a glucose molecule, which has 6 carbon, into two molecules of the 3 carbon compound pyruvate. The first five steps are known as the preparatory phase or energy investment phase. In the first step, the terminal phosphate group of an ATP molecule is transferred to carbon-6 of glucose molecule by the enzyme hexokinase, producing glucose-6 phosphate and ADP. Next, the enzyme phosphohexyl isomerase or phosphoglucose isomerase catalyzes the reversible isomerization of glucose-6 phosphate which is an aldose to fructose 6-phosphate, which is a ketose. Next, phosphofructose kinase 1, or PFK1, catalyzes the transfer of a phosphoryl group from ATP to fructose 6-phosphate, yielding fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The PFK1 reaction is irreversible, and it is the first committed step in the glycolytic pathway. Glucose 6-phosphate has other possible fates, which will be discussed later. Next, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate aldolase catalyzes a reversible aldol reaction that cleaves fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two different triose phosphates, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, an aldose, and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, a ketose. Only glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can be directly degraded in subsequent steps of glycolysis. Therefore, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. So far, two ATPs have been used in the preparatory phase of glycolysis. The second half of glycolysis is known as the energy payoff phase. It begins with two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which are oxidized and phosphorylated by the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. The oxidation step is coupled with the reduction of NAD to NADH, and the phosphorylation step incorporates phosphoryl group from an inorganic phosphate. Two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates are converted to 2,1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, which is still a very high-energy compound, and most of the free energy is conserved by the formation of acyl phosphate group at carbon-1 of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Next, the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase transfers the high-energy phosphoryl group from the carboxyl group of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to ADP, forming ATP and 3-phosphoglycerate. Know that phosphoglycerate kinase is named for the reverse reaction. The formation of ATP by phosphoryl group transfer from a substrate like 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is referred to as substrate-level phosphorylation. Next, the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase catalyzes the intramolecular transfer of phosphoryl group from carbon-3 to carbon-2 of glycerate producing 2-phosphoglycerate. Next, the enzyme enolase catalyzes reversible removal of a water molecule from 2-phosphoglycerate, producing phosphoenolpyruvate. The last step of glycolysis involves another substrate-level phosphorylation, in which pyruvate kinase, which is again named for the reverse reaction, catalyzes the transfer of phosphoryl group from phosphoenolpyruvate to ADP producing pyruvate and ATP. During the energy payoff phase of glycolysis, two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates are converted to two pyruvates, producing two NADH and four ATP molecules. Combining the preparatory phase and payoff phase of glycolysis, the net reaction involves the conversion of glucose into two pyruvate molecules, with a net production of two ATP, two NADH, and two water molecules. Note that all the irreversible steps are written in pink, symbolizing catabolism or breaking down of molecules, and all the reversible steps are written in purple. Glycolysis takes place in all cells of our body to break down glucose for metabolic energy. Some organs, such as our brain, prefer to use glucose as the energy source. However, the supply of glucose is not always readily available, especially between meals and after exercise. Therefore, another pathway known as gluconeogenesis, gluco meaning sugar, neo meaning new, and genesis meaning formation, synthesizes glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors, such as lactate, glucogenic amino acids, and triacylglycerols, and it takes place primarily in the liver. Gluconeogenesis and glycolysis share seven steps, which are all reversible. However, the three irreversible steps cannot be used in gluconeogenesis. They need to be bypassed by a separate set of enzymes. Gluconeogenesis is an anabolic pathway, which means synthesis of molecules, and it's labeled in blue. 
The first bypass reaction in glucogenesis is the conversion of pyruvate to phosphoenolpyruvate, and it involves two enzymes. First, pyruvate carboxylase adds a carboxyl group on pyruvate, with the coenzyme biotin as the carrier of the activated bicarbonate, producing oxaloacetate, a four carbon molecule. Since this reaction is endergonic, it is coupled to the cleavage of ATP. Oxaloacetate is decarboxylated and phosphorylated by the enzyme phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase, which is named for the reverse reaction. It requires GTP as the phosphoryl group donor. The combination of pyruvate carboxylase and PEP carboxykinase serve as bypass reaction for pyruvate kinase. The second glycolytic reaction that needs to be bypassed is the phosphorylation of fructose 6-phosphate by PFK1. The generation of fructose 6-phosphate from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is catalyzed by an enzyme called fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase 1, or FBPase 1, which hydrolyzes carbon 1-phosphate of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The third bypass and the final reaction of gluconeogenesis is the dephosphorylation of glucose 6-phosphate to glucose, which is another hydrolysis reaction and is catalyzed by the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase. The net reaction of gluconeogenesis converts 2-pyruvate to glucose by using 4 ATP, 2 GTP, 2 NADH, and 4 water molecules, which is a relatively expensive process. Glycolysis and gluconeogenesis are reciprocally regulated at the three irreversible steps. The enzyme hexokinase has an isozyme called glucokinase that is found in pancreas and liver. Glucokinase is also known as hexokinase 4. Isozymes are different proteins that catalyze the same reaction. Glucokinase differ from hexokinase in three main ways. First, glucokinase has higher Km than hexokinase. KM stands for michaelis menten constant, which measures the substrate concentration required for effective catalysis. Higher KM means that glucokinase require higher concentration of glucose for effective catalysis. Therefore, glucokinase is more sensitive to glucose concentration than hexokinase. And it also means that glucokinase binds weaker to glucose, allowing glucose generated by gluconeogenesis in the liver to leave the cell before it being trapped by phosphorylation. Second, glucokinase is not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. Third, it is instead inhibited by a regulation protein. Phosphofructose kinase 1, or PFK1, is the step that commits glucose to glycolysis, and it is reciprocally regulated with fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase 1 by the allosteric regulator called fructose 2,6-bisphosphatase. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is synthesized from fructose 6-phosphate by the enzyme phosphofructose kinase 2, and it is degraded by the enzyme fructose 2,6-bisphosphatase 2. These two enzymes are part of the same bifunctional protein. Phosphorylation of this protein by protein kinase A stimulated by glucagon activates FBPase 2, which decreases fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and promotes gluconeogenesis. On the other hand, the phosphorylation of this bifunctional protein by phosphoprotein phosphatase, which is stimulated by insulin, activates phosphofructose kinase 2, which increases the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, which promotes glycolysis. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate is an allosteric activator of PFK1 and an allosteric inhibitor of fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase 1. PFK1 is also activated by ADP and AMP, and inhibited by citrate, ATP, and proton, whereas fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase is inhibited by fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and AMP. When the concentration of AMP rises, it means that the cell has low energy charge. Therefore, catabolic pathways such as glycolysis will be activated, and anabolic pathways such as gluconeogenesis will be inhibited. Lastly, pyruvate kinase is activated by fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and inactivated by ATP, alanine, acetyl-CoA, and long-chain fatty acids. Whereas both pyruvate carboxylase and phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase are inhibited by ADP, and pyruvate carboxylase is activated by acetyl-CoA. Glycolysis and gluconeogenesis are also regulated by several transcription factors. Sterile regulatory element binding proteins, or SREBP, turns on the synthesis of glucokinase and pyruvate kinase. Therefore, it promotes glycolysis. 
It is activated by insulin and inhibited by glucagon. On the other hand, cyclic AMP response element binding protein, or CREB, is activated by glucagon and promotes gluconeogenesis. FOX01 or 4 cat box other one also promote gluconeogenesis and it is inhibited by insulin. Carbohydrate response element binding protein or CHREBP is stimulated by cellulose 5-phosphate, an intermediate of the pentose phosphate pathway, which increases with glucose concentration. CHREBP also promotes gluconeogenesis. The Warburg effect refers to a modified cellular metabolism found in cancer cells. Many tumor cells grow under under hypoxic or low oxygen conditions because they lack the capillary network to supply sufficient oxygen, which activates hypoxia-inducible transcription factor 1 or HIF1 through proline hydroxylation, which increases the production of glycolytic enzymes. Therefore, tumors of nearly all types carry out glycolysis at a much higher rate than normal tissue. The deficiency in pyruvate kinase can result in hemolytic anemia, or the breakdown of red blood cells, since red blood cells uses glucose and glycolysis as its sole source of energy. Lastly, I want to point out some alternative pathways for some intermediates of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. Glucose 6-phosphate can also enter the pentose phosphate pathway, which generate NADPH that are important for reductive biosynthesis. Glucose 6-phosphate can also be converted to glucose 1-phosphate and stored as glycogen when excess glucose is available. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate can interconvert with glycerol 3-phosphate, which is how glycerol broken down from fatty acids enter glycolysis, as well as how many phospholipids are synthesized. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate can be converted to 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate, which is an allosteric inhibitor of hemoglobin. Lastly, 3-phosphoglycerate is involved in the synthesis of serine, glycine, and cysteine, and phosphoenopyruvate is involved in the synthesis of aromatic amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan.